Thanks again for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. And cut. What's going on YouTube? On today's Mod Monday, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and show you how to solder like a pro. Mod Mondays is the series where I show you tips, tricks, and helpful hints to up your modding game. If you're gonna be working with and modifying electronics, it's important that you know how to solder them together. If you're not familiar with soldering, it's the process of making electrical connections between wires and circuit boards, or wires and wires, or wires and switches, any combination of them. Soldering can be a very intimidating task, and when I first learned about soldering, I was intimidated as well. But with a little practice and patience, you too can be soldering like a pro. So before we begin soldering, it's important that we look at the types of soldering irons that you can use. So I've got a collection of soldering irons here. Uh, the first one to my left, this one's kind of an old looking one with a wooden handle. This is made by Dunlap. Dunlap is a company that was originally owned by Sears back in the 40s and they operated from the 40s to the 60s. So this soldering iron is older than I am. It's a 5408, 115 volt, 80 watt. One of the things you'll notice first about this is this thing is massive. All right, so this isn't really what we're gonna wanna use to work on small PCBs. This is more useful for soldering wires. If you've ever seen old electronics from the 50s and 60s, you'll notice that the components were really big in comparison to the components today. So this would have been more useful back then. Uh, today, not very useful. This belongs to my dad and I've never seen him use it before. So we're not gonna use this. Next we've got a Weller. This is a soldering gun. It's a 8200N, 100 to 140 watts. What's great about this is that it doesn't require you to hold the soldering iron like a pencil. It feels more comfortable in your hand like a, well, like a gun. The most important feature about this soldering iron is this trigger here. When you pull the trigger, it applies heat instantly. So you only get heat when you need it. However, the inherent problem that I have with this design is that it's incredibly heavy. All the weight is on the back end of the gun itself. So half the time when you're soldering, your wrist is gonna give out. It's either gonna go forward or go backwards. So even though this has a great feature to it, uh, it's definitely not my favorite. Next, we have a Sears Craftsman soldering iron. This is a model 113. It's a 45 watt soldering iron in pencil form. Eventually, the Dunlap brand was changed to Craftsman. This was the soldering iron that I learned how to solder with. And what's great about this is it's not as heavy as the other soldering irons. It's very lightweight. Because it has a pencil grip, it allows you to manipulate the iron a lot easier. The biggest downside to this soldering iron is that there's no temperature control whatsoever. So you are getting the full 45 watts from this iron, which means that you need to get in there, solder, and get out quick. This is not a really good iron for working on PCBs because of temperature sensitivity of certain components. But still, it's a really good soldering iron if all you're doing is soldering wires together. All right, last but not least, this is the soldering iron station that I currently use. This is the Weller WLC100. I'll put a link in the video description to where you can purchase this. Uh, so this has a lot of great features to it. One, it's a station, so it's got the stand built in already. You've got a switch here. You can turn it on and off, and it has a dial here so you can adjust how hot the soldering iron gets. I usually leave it around four, uh, five when I'm warming it up. And it comes with a soldering iron itself. This soldering iron uses a wedge tip. This is one of my favorite irons. Unfortunately, I lost the sponge that came with this in the process of moving, so I had to replace it with your standard kitchen sponge. All right, so let's move on from soldering irons. Let's talk about solder itself. So the kind of solder that you wanna use is gonna be a rosin core based solder. So like, for example, I got this one from Radio Shack. This is a uh, silver bearing solder that has rosin core in it. Most solders these days are rosin core based. So rosin is actually a type of flux. Flux is really a type of acid that uh, cleans out the contacts and it prevents your soldering joints from oxidizing because oxidation can get in between the contacts and the solder itself, which will ruin your conductivity. And of course, if the wire can't conduct electricity, then you have a bad solder joint. But one of the things that I find useful is to have my own flux as well. This is Rosen Soldering Flux. I picked it up from Radio Shack, which no longer 
exists anymore in the US, unfortunately. Many of the Radio Shacks are actually going out of business. I picked this one up on clearance. So Flux is really good for improving solder joints, getting solder to flow smoothly. I use soldering Flux mostly for work on PCBs, especially when it comes to uh, working with surface mount components, because the Flux really helps solder to flow a lot better. It can remove the oxidation from the surface of old solder joints, allowing your soldering iron to conduct a lot better and remove the solder more efficiently. Now let's talk about some optional accessories that you can use as well. Sometimes when I'm soldering, I realize that I need an extra set of hands. And so you can actually purchase one like this. These are, some people refer to them as helping hands. It's really two alligator clips on a piece of adjustable metal. And what they can do is they can hold your components or hold your wires in place. Soldering requires you to use the iron and your solder simultaneously. So you don't always have two extra hands available. But you might also wanna get yourself some soldering tools. Uh, this set is made by Archer. I don't even know if this company exists anymore but it's a series of hand tools that can be used to hold wires or components in place while you solder. I find that these tools are really helpful, especially for holding down wires in place while you apply solder and heat. All right, well, one of the accessories that a lot of people don't think about are soldering tips. And what's important about this is that if you're gonna be doing a lot of soldering work that involves both wires and PCBs, you're gonna wanna have different style tips for different jobs. So this tip right here, this is a conical one. In fact, this tip is made by Weller. This is an ST7 conical tip. Conical tips are really good because they have a fine point at the end, which makes them great for small, delicate work like PCBs, for example. Whereas the wedge tip that comes with my soldering iron is better suited for soldering wires. All right, and the last thing that I'm gonna be covering is heat shrink tubing. You can buy a kit like this at your local electronics store. I know Fry's Electronics has it because I think that's where I got this one from. Heat shrink tubing is important because after you're done soldering you want to ensure that your soldering joint doesn't make contact with other wires that could short circuit and damage your electronics. Another tool that you're going to need is either a solder sucker or a solder braid. Solder sucker, I know, it's a really technical term. Your solder sucker works exactly the way that it sounds. When you want to remove solder from a solder joint you simply heat up the solder with your iron, depress the plunger, and then when you're ready to suck the solder up you hit the button and it will create a vacuum that draws the solder up inside, pulling the solder away from your solder joint. Another method for removing solder is a desoldering braid, such as this one. The way that desoldering braid works is that you place the braid on top of the solder joint you wanna remove. You then place the iron on top of the braid, heating it up, and as the solder is absorbed into the braid, you pull it away. In my personal experience, I prefer using the desoldering braid for PCB work because it produces cleaner results. I prefer using the solder sucker when I have a lot more solder in place, usually when I'm working with wires. We're gonna begin soldering by first turning the soldering iron on, and then give it about a minute to warm up. We wanna ensure that our soldering iron reaches full temperature before we begin. And make sure you go ahead and wet the sponge uh, because we're gonna be needing this to clean the tip off. It's been a minute and you'll notice on your soldering iron on the tip, there's like a bunch of crud and stuff on there. That's old solder and old oxidation. You see that? It's all that crap that's on there. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe that off. Start by tinning the soldering iron or tinning the tip. And we're just going to put it on the tip. Make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area because it will be producing a lot of smoke. You just wanna make sure the tip is covered in solder. By putting solder on the tip, we're gonna get better heat transfer than if we just use the soldering iron alone. And be careful because the tip of the soldering iron is very hot, so you don't wanna touch it with your fingers. And when you're done using it, make sure you put the soldering iron back into its holder. For my first demonstration, I'm gonna be soldering these two wires together. You wanna to make sure that the ends of the wires are lined up and they're stripped clean. Before we solder these together, what we wanna do is prepare each of the wires individually. Now, what's important when you're soldering the wires together, you don't need to heat the solder. You need to heat the wire, because if you heat the wire, what'll happen is that the solder should just flow right in. And I'll do it again here. It just makes beautiful contact like that, effortlessly. And now we're just gonna heat them. Like that. Now that's one way to do it, 
I'm gonna show you a better way to do it though. Here's another example, but more close up. You'll notice that I've twisted one of the wires around the other wire. This will form a tighter joint as they're strongly linked together. And you'll see the solder just flows right in. Pull the solder iron away. And we have a much tighter joint. Now this soldering joint is exposed to any other wires or connections that could short circuit this. So we wanna put on some heat shrink. I've got a tiny piece of heat shrink here that we're gonna go ahead and add to the wire. You just slide it on down the wire. You wanna make sure the heat shrink is over the wire itself. Now normally what you could do is you could take a lighter and light this, but I don't like that because it tends to leave burn marks. One of the best ways that you could do it is with a heat gun. Now I realize a lot of people don't have a heat gun, so I will take my soldering iron. I'll actually use this shaft portion to just heat it up. Start on the ends and just touch it carefully and you'll see that it'll start to come together. Start with the bottom and then the top. And you'll notice that it shrinks or conforms to the wire itself. So that way when you're done, not only do you have a strong connection, but now that connection is protected from any other outside electrical sources. One of the first things you'll notice about these LED strips is that they have these really small pads that we're gonna be soldering to. Unfortunately, a soldering iron like this with the wedge tip is not really gonna work out for us. Unfortunately, the wedge tip is just too big. We need a tip that offers more precision. And in that instance, we're gonna switch over to this Weller conical tip instead. But that'll require us to turn off the soldering station and let it cool down first before we replace the tip. Now we have our conical tip fully secured inside of our soldering iron. We're gonna repeat the process of tinning the tip of the soldering iron before we begin. When we're working with this LED test strip, we want to add solder to each of these contacts first before we connect the wire. I went ahead and tinned this wire already. If you don't have any of the soldering tools like I have, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers. These should work just fine. And there you go, we have a soldered contact. All right, now let's say there's a problem. Let's say on one of these solder pads, we added too much solder and you're hitting it with a soldering iron, trying to pull it off. Chris, what do I do? Well, that's why we have these solder sucker tools. We're gonna go ahead and depress the plunger. So now it's loaded and ready to go. We're gonna hold the plunger in one hand and the soldering iron in the other. And when we're ready, we're gonna heat the solder and then we're gonna hit the button and draw the solder up. There you go. Now the plunger tool is better suited for work with wires, but let's say we're working with this surface mount board. Is there any other way that we can do it? Yes, there is actually. We've got our desoldering braid that we can use here. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay the braid on top and heat it. And you'll see that, see how the braid is picking it up? Look at that. You'll notice there's some yellow crap on there. That's flux, not to worry about it. But Chris, you ask, what if I want to remove surface mount components as well? Well, those types of jobs, such as removing integrated circuits are better suited for heat guns. But if you're removing small items like LEDs that only have a couple of terminals, you can actually do this with a soldering iron as well. So in order to help us, this is our Rosencore soldering flux. So I've just taken a little bit on there. You can see it's kind of yellowish. We're just gonna go ahead and run the flux along the sides. Make sure you get the flux on the terminals. Now let's remember what flux is used for. Flux has weak acids in it that eat up oxidation. So this is gonna allow the iron to make better heat transfer with these terminals, allowing us to pull the contacts off and get the LED off a lot easier. Because the idea is that we wanna get the LED off without damaging it. All right, so now that we've got the flux on both sides, we're gonna take our soldering iron once again, 
and we're gonna begin just heating both sides and trying to lift the LED off. Just trying to get a feel for how it loosens up. So you'll see it's producing a lot of smoke here. I'm gonna try to get the tool underneath the LED if possible. So see it's starting to lift up on this side. There we go, we got it up on one side. We'll go ahead and pick it up with our tools. There you go, you can see it. we got an LED, all six terminals are intact, and now we can wire it up for our Steam Link mod. So you've probably seen this board somewhere before. This board probably looks familiar to you because it was used in the Steam Link mod. I repurposed these LEDs inside of the Steam Link in order to light up the window. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button below and sharing the video. Join the modern nation and get subscribed today by clicking on the subscribe button below, or you can click the IMDN logo in the bottom right corner. And when you do, click the bell icon inside of the subscribe button to get notified the moment that I release new YouTube videos. I'm releasing new videos every Friday and Saturday, and occasionally I do these Mod Monday sections as well. Leave me a comment down in the comment section and let me know, was this video useful to you? Did you know how to solder before you watched this video? Were there new tips or tricks that you learned about soldering that you didn't know before? I have to say that soldering is more like an art than it is like a process. Everybody does it differently, and teaching it is one of the hardest things to do. It takes patience and it takes time. Keep practicing and you'll get better at it. If you have ideas for Mod Monday episodes that you would like to see, let me know in the comments section below. Who knows, it might be featured in a future Mod Monday video. If you have any other comments or questions, you can leave them for me in the comments section below. And as always, you can reach me by social media. I'm available via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can catch me streaming video games on Twitch every Friday and Saturday evening. The times are listed to the right. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.